Sorry, you just caught me planning my travel there for Europe. Turns out it's about it's about that much, so it's going to be easy. Welcome to a very special edition of the Clan Show, where we'll be looking particularly at Clan's Challenge, which is the Champions Hockey League. I'll be talking to Simon Sandberg, the Head of Communications for the Champions Hockey League, but we'll also be having a more in-depth look at the season's roster, and I'll be having a particularly in-depth chat with Head Coach Ryan Finity. He'll be telling me about the players he's recruited and his hopes for the season, and it's been quite a recruitment indeed. But first up, I'm going to have a quick chat with my co-commentator at the Clan game, Games and new father Craig Anderson. Craig, how you doing? I'm good, Jerry. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. And congratulations to you and Suzanne, of course. How are you feeling, buddy? Are you tired? Thank you very much. No, uh, not at the moment. The young one was uh, came nine weeks early, so um, she's still very much in the hospital, being looked after by the excellent uh, staff at Crosshouse Hospital. But no, she's doing really, really well. Oh, but that's really good to hear, pal. Really good to hear. How are you feeling then at the moment? Looking forward to getting back into a hockey season. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, it's it's kind of it's kind of falling off the radar a wee bit, what with fatherhood and everything else. But no, just... as we as we get into just a few days now, as it is before the, the start of the season, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get really hyped about it. I'm looking forward to the, the champion hockey league campaign and what may come of that, and obviously a brand new league season. It's going to be very exciting. Of course, and it's been quite a recruitment. A lot of people have been talking about how the clan have recruited this season. Things are looking good. How do you feel that uh, Ryan Finity and Gareth, of course, have well have recruited this year? You know, on, on paper, the team looks as solid, if not more solid, uh, than last season. There was great quality throughout that team last year. Guys like Zach Fitzgerald and Chris Frank gave a real physical edge to the team, although they, they ended up in the penalty box quite a lot, which yeah. kind of uh, negated that a little bit. Missing those guys is going to be interesting. How, how Finner has replaced them. I mean, he's, he's bringing in more physical guys. We had Marcus Goetz. He's the, the, more, the most recent signing as, as we speak just now. Um, he certainly looks as though he's, he's going to be a player who's, who's going to enjoy the elite, the elite league and the, the physicality that entails. You've got guys there that won't be afraid to drop the, the gloves either. Rick Jackman looks at a standout in terms of his experience in that defensive core also. Chris Bruton, who's, who's new in as well, he's excited to be coming to Glasgow. I think his, uh, his enthusiasm was probably heard in the Clan Radio interview I did with him. Brendan Brooks is another big player 36 years old he's got a lot of experience that will carry well in the team and you've got guys like Jordan County coming in coming into the team also the one player I'm looking forward to is probably Alex Levitt I think Alex uh, I'm really interested to see how he how he lines up you know he's a player again another player who's, who's over 30 years old man which means he's got a lot of experience he's played a lot of ice time down the years and he knows uh, does it Stefan Meyer well if memory serves me correctly yeah they played together yeah no, well not in the same line but they played that. together yeah together they know each other well so you know it's going to be interesting uh, how he takes to life in Glasgow yeah certainly an exciting season now we might have recruited really strongly but how do you think this team's going to play in the Champions Hockey League so it's unlike anything else. It's like, if you want to put it in football terms, we all know how dominant Celtic are in the Scottish League. It's against European football. It's a, it's a different kettle. It will be the same for Brayhead Clan. You're up against two very, very quality teams. Venture Lakers won the Swedish League last year. They came out as the champions. They didn't win the playoffs. They're the number one seeds. You know, so this team has a, a pedigree about it. Ingle had are the same as well. They had a very good year last year. So I, in, in terms of expectations, I wouldn't go, uh, I wouldn't go bored in terms of expectations. Like For me, it's just of going out there, enjoying the experience, learning from it, and enjoying it that much that we want to be back next year. That's, that's the way I would look at it. Absolutely. And as you said, it's been a, going to be a huge challenge, but a, a certainly a very different challenge in the conference and in the elite league who do you think this season are going to be clan's main rivals in the conference obviously five flyers games have been fantastic to watch last season in particular but uh could be kind of different this season who, who do you fancy in the conference to really push clan um, I, I would have to say Dundee. um i think mark the favors um recruited really well a lot of the guys he's brought in look look like the real deal when you compare how Dundee were last year. I don't know, Dundee were, were just poor from the start and just never recovered last year. They needed something fresh in there. Mark Lefebvre gives them that. Edinburgh could be a surprise package this year. Um, it's, in fact, 
having said that, Manchester will be a surprise package. We don't know what to expect from yeah. uh, Manchester Storm. They're, they're they're in the league this year as well. Um, I would have to say Dundee are the are, I would say are Clan's biggest rivals. Although I would say Clan's quality above anything else will, will see them win the Gardner Conference. In my opinion, I'm not just saying that because I'm Clan's media coordinator and I'm talking to Clan TV here. But <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what side your bread's the... buttered on. You know, you know <laughs> full well. That's my feeling. Yeah. That's my feeling. Uh, I would have to say again, I, you know, I would. I think the Flyers will struggle this. I'm not saying that to be controversial. I think the is a change um, in the coach, and that's nothing against Tom Duty and Danny Stewart have done a terrific job down the years. Fife lacked freshness last year. They, they looked a bit stale at times. You know, when the big players were missing, they seemed to run out of ideas. They've brought in a, a raft of new players who could make the difference. I could be sitting here in a few months' time looking completely stupid if uh, Fife are up there challenging. I just think there's something missing from that club and I think they badly need change. Yeah, it could be. I mean, TJ Keg looks like quite a player as well, but you do wonder without Nickerson there now as well, are they, they missing that kind of defence that, uh, you know, are those players going to get to play now, and which has been at a very rough and tumble conference and looks like it's going to be set up to be that again. Nickerson's a big mission, absolutely right, and no doubt he'll do a job for Belfast Giants. Getting Kyle Haynes back was a big move for Five Flyers. I find that uh, Five without Haynes were, were a different proposition to when they were when they had him in the team, and he's had, he's had one or two slight injury problems in the last year and a half. Yeah. Well. Big to get him back. He'll certainly be, play a big part. He's their captain as well, of course. Um, so if they miss Kyle Haynes for any length of time, you'll see a big difference in them. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks. Okay. I think we're kind of breaking up a little bit with you there, but very much appreciate the chat there, pal. And I'll see you back again, sat in the optimum chuck a puck throwing seats at Brayhead Clan. <laughs> yep, you've got a challenge this year, Jerry. I've been practicing. Oh, dear. All right. Okay. Right. Well, no more challenges. <laughs> right. You're starting to chirp me now. Thanks very much there, Craig. See you later, pal. Cheers, Cheers. there. Big thanks, thanks to Craig there. Thanks very much. Now, as I mentioned earlier on in the introduction there, I met up with head coach Ryan Finity to discuss a little bit in depth what looks like a really, really interesting roster. Six NHLers and a wealth of AHL experience, a real hope for potential coming through as well in other areas. I caught up with him for his Finity interview, a Finterview, if you will, at his luxurious pad in the Costa del Ferry Village by Paisley. Have a look at this. Ryan, thank you very much for inviting me into your house. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. You're the first to welcome you back. It's a nice place you got here as well. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah. It's been a long kind of summer for you, or do you feel it's gone quite quickly? Are you raring to get back into the season? I think, yeah, definitely. I think it's it was uh, it was nice to get away and, and get a break, and, and obviously we've got a bit of a turnover here, so it's been a longer a longer summer than I thought it would be, but uh, it's going well. Is it? For you, does it kind of go quite quickly, do you feel, or do you think it's quite a surprise? Because obviously the Champions Hockey League has brought everything a lot more pertinent. It's happening. Yeah, it's a bit more stressful this year, you know, with, you know, with trying to get the roster completed and, and making sure we are getting the right guys and not getting rushed into anything. But, yeah, now that, now that I'm back, you know, we're just kind of keeping an eye on everybody's visa situation and obviously shoring up the uh, the last player here. So, yeah. um, but it's going well. You know, like I said, I, we're, we're pretty optimistic we'll have a deal done here in the next, you know, short little while. Now, that kind of patience, has that been a key tactic? Has that just been part of the plan? And that must have been hard as well because these Champions Hockey League dates are coming up very, very soon. But is that patience kind of paid off, do you feel? I think, yeah, I think it always pays off. I think, you know, if you wait, especially in our league now, it's changing a bit because the pound's, you know, so strong that we can offer a bit uh, better contracts. But it, it's always paid off to, to wait it out, especially to get guys like, like Nathan McKeever. Yeah. You know, guys like that aren't, aren't readily available in, in April, May, even in June. So you sometimes got to wait. And, you know, if they, if they don't quite get in for an exhibition game, well, you, you got you to gotta deal with that and, and get them in for the other, you know, 30 weeks that are, are pretty important. Well, I want to talk about the roster. I want to take this opportunity to kind of go into a little bit of depth because there's been some head-turning signings uh, for a lot of people in the league talking about quite a lot of our players. But first and foremost, if you had time to sort of take in the end of last season, what happened there, I mean, it was a, a successful year, but ultimately a better pill to swallow losing the league by a point. Yeah, you know, when you go that far and, you know, you, you look back, and I think everybody looks back to maybe the Edinburgh loss and, you know, and, it, it was a great season. We had, a, we had a great season. We fell one goal short, you know, and, and um, it's tough. You know, it's, it's a long stretch to go and, and get nothing for, for, your, uh, for your efforts. But at the same time, I think the guys coming back, it kind of makes you hungry, you know, and maybe makes you understand a bit more how important every game is in, in this league. And, and um, you know, I think we've, uh, 
we, we brought back kind of our core group of guys and, and our leadership group and we've, we've added some, some veteran, you know, a bit more veteran experience and you know, I'm, I'm excited to, to get back, uh, get back on to this new group, you know, and, and turn the page from yet, from last year and, and see if we can build uh, just a bit uh, bit further up the mountain this year. Well, I'd like to talk about those returning players as well. And obviously, like you've said you've got a core group back. You said that at the end of last season. I'd like to bring back a, a core. I think we've got a good team here. And obviously, we saw that on the ice. But a few key players not coming back. And essentially, all the fan favourites might add. So Lee Salters, no Fitzgerald, no Derek Rail, uh, Trimmer, so obviously another high point scorer. You're yeah. just trying to annoy the fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, no, I don't think it was really our, our intention. I think it may have just the way the, the summer paid out, played out and, and the guys that we, we brought in, um, you know, they, some guys had to make room for them and it's, it's never easy and, and, you know, and it's to no fault of their own. You know, these, these were great, great players and great people in our dressing room, but, you know, like like every year, there's change around one-year contracts. There's a lot of change over, and and uh, you know they've all found jobs and they've all moved on, and I'm sure we'll do great with with their respective teams now. And we got to you know welcome the new guys in. Well, I'd like to take the opportunity to kind of delve into this current roster. Then, if, if you might, and there's only one place to kind of start. Start with our goalkeeper. Uh, Holt comes in with a huge reputation. How important do you think he could be to our season? Yeah, I mean, obviously he's, you know, Jonesy did an incredible job for us and you know, I'd be remiss to, to you know, that, that was a tough phone call when we when we decided to to go with Holt and, and um, you know, Jonesy's a great person and, 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 a, and a great goal and he, he, he was great for us and, you know, Holt comes in now, obviously he's got the, um, he's got a big resume and a big reputation, he's a big goalie and he, um, you know, he's well respected throughout Europe so, you know, we're, we're excited to see what he can bring, you know, uh, and, um, you know, I think he's excited to, to come to Brayhead. I think he's excited to, to come to a good organization and and uh, he wants to win, you know, and, that, and that's the biggest thing. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's always tough when you when you switch your goalie, you know, especially when, when you when you replace a guy like Kyle Jones, you know, yeah. we we were able to to uh, to replace him. What we think is a very, very good player. And and uh, we're, we're expecting big things from uh, from Chris. Another important player as well in the D as well was Zach Sullivan, came in last season, young guy, young Brit, came in. How important was it to sign him up again and extend his contract even? Yeah, Sully, you know, like I said, when we brought Sully in, it was... Uh, <laughs> it's busy here. Yeah. We've got fans. <laughs> yeah. We brought Sully and we weren't too sure what we were getting. Uh, a good buddy of mine had coached him, Doug Shepard in Basingstoke, and he'd been talking about him for a few years and, and told me it was probably time to, to give him a shot. And, you know, and, and Sully did great. You know, he played played big minutes for us, and he's he's kind of the reason. Then we we've kind of jumped for for Jordan County as well. Yeah. You know, and, and same kind of fashion on the forward side. We're gonna see, bring him in slowly and see see where he goes. But like I said, he's got a lot of a lot of room, and he's coming into a deep deep team. But he's also coming into a four line hockey team where we're you know where we do want to get our guys on the ice, and we want to spread the minutes out a little bit to. You know, especially in, in second games and the weekend and stuff when the energy levels are a bit low. So, yeah. it's um, you know, it's an exciting time. Uh, I've never I've never coached a four line hockey team. A lot of guys in this league haven't. And typically, have always been three plus one. So, it's uh, it'll be a bit of a learning curve, but uh, I'm excited and I know I know our young guys are and and guys like County are excited to make the jump up. Plus, he also has some Champions Hockey League experience. Maybe you can lean on him for that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we'll ask him how that. Yeah, exactly. So maybe Jackal can ask him how how that was. But uh, yeah, no, it'll be like I said. It's good. It's good to have the youth. He's a Scottish kid as well. Yeah, which is nice, and it's it's good to kind of build that youth. We have to, you know, we can we can't afford to go out and get all the the big guns here. So we got to make sure that we're we're developing kids the right way. Well, a lot of Scots, interestingly, coming into the team this year. Also, Tristan Harper's uh, been retained as well. We've got Gary as well in net. You've mentioned Jordan. We've also Barry, uh, Barry McKenzie's come into the team as well, and adding with some really interesting Brits that have already been uh, been here before, know what it's about. Ben Davis, Lee Esters, and Matt Hayward is obviously yeah. really moving on. How do you feel about your kind of your British guys this year? I think it's a big year for for a lot of them. You know, it's a big year for guys like uh, Ezzy Hayward and, and Benny to, to to lead the younger group, and you know they're they're coming in now and they're getting pushed from from that that other you know the mckenzie's and the counties and and the harpers and those are, those guys are now getting pushed from from there so you know it, i think it, it kind of creates a, a little bit of uh you know internal competition which is always good you know nobody can really get complacent and, and it gives us such good depth you know mm -hmm. last year we lose haywood and it severely affects our lineup now we got to really juggle it around and we just didn't have anybody to replace them where this year if that happens we have you know instant replacement right there and guys that are ready to jump in and, and can jump in and, and fill that void. And Matt Hayward's going to come in a little bit later in the season. He's had a, an operation recently. Where, where's, he, where's his fitness at at the moment? Yeah, he's, he's ahead of schedule. Um, 
you know, last I talked to Rachel, they, they figure maybe third week of September, mm -hmm. maybe you know, see how it goes. It, um, you know, but we the one thing is we don't want to rush it back and have them injured again. And we're, we're, we're in a position where we don't have to, obviously carrying the, the extra forward. Um, you know, there's a reason we're doing that is so we don't we don't rush Maddie back and make sure that we, we give him, you know, enough time to, to heal that shoulder and then bring him in when he's ready. Well, obviously the fans are very excited as well to see this team on the ice. How do you feel now with the expectation levels? How do you manage that with the fans? I mean, where do you see this team going this season? I, you know, it's tough. It's, it's, it's too, I'm not a big believer in, in looking too far ahead and I think people People put way too much stock in things they can't control, you know. And I think I think the way you know the way we run our program here, we're pretty we're pretty grounded, and we know how close we came last year, and we know how much, you know how bad we wanted. But at the same time, we got to be realistic and see where where we're at. And you know, if, as long as we're taking care of everything we can control, we should be fine. Yeah. You know. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of variables. You know, we got You got to stay healthy, and and there's a lot of things that go into winning a championship. And we just want to make sure that we're we're taking the right steps. But like I said, you know, every year we've gotten better and better, and and I don't see you know the, uh, slowing down at any time soon. So that the, the gradual progression is definitely there, and it's just on on myself and the organization to make sure that we're we're doing the right taking the right steps, bringing the right guys, and and uh, you know hopefully that turns into to success. Well, I know the fans are excited. Keep raising the bar. Thanks very much, Ryan. Thank you. Cheers, there. A huge thanks to Ryan there for inviting us round to his apartment. A fantastic view there at the Costa del Ferry Village. Plenty to be excited about this season. But before the season does begin, it starts with a huge challenge for the clan, the Champions Hockey League. And I have with me on the line just now Simon Sandberg, the COO and Director of Communications for the Champions Hockey League, talking to me from Zurich. Thank you very much for chatting to us, Simon. It's my pleasure, Jerry. How much? are you guys? Yeah, really good. Much appreciated. I know you've had a really... Uh, busy time at the moment. How are the organization? How's everything going for the preparation for the Champions Hockey League? It is going well. Uh, you know, one, if you had asked me this question one year ago, I would have said, I'm scared shitless. <laughs> you know, we, I was we very candid. Know, for... <laughs> we didn't know uh, what to expect. We had no experience uh, with this, and uh, somehow we. Uh, managed to deliver 161 games so before season two we uh, we have much more confidence and and um, yeah we we simply know that we will be able to pull it off and we have also expanded our staff a little bit so we are we are more people with more confidence so we we are we are uh, uh yeah simply we are confident before this this season. It just sounds like the whole thing's growing and growing. And uh, what's your role in the organization? I mean, obviously communications is such a huge part when you're talking about, you know, a competition across a continent with people talking different languages and people, you know, teams coming from places where I guess folk wouldn't have expected teams to come from before. What's your role in communicating and organizing all that? Yeah, obviously communication is, is a big piece of it and that includes you know the 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 normal groundwork uh, press releases keeping in touch with the clubs uh, also the whole digital media part with the website and social media uh, and you know since since you know we have 48 teams but we don't have so much staff so we we need to help each other with many issues uh, grab things which we normally wouldn't do so they are really Many things you do uh, in order to simply uh, get this thing going. So uh, I, I, I'm I'm also doing uh, you know uh, tournament regulations, sports regulations together with our uh, sports director and all the daily uh, daily office duties you can imagine in order to to get this 48 team league going. Wow, so you're certainly covering a lot of bases, wearing a lot of hats then at the same time. I know that feeling at Brayhead Clan. I think we've had to cover something quite similar. Now, I've got to ask you, were, were some of the more established teams in Europe, were they surprised to find out that, that hockey was so popular in Scotland? I think that most teams and also the office was pleasantly surprised <laughs> by the... Uh, 
enthusiasm which we have seen from actually both Brayhead and Sheffield yeah. and the excellent communications you do and the way you work with your website and social media and the enthusiasm and response from your fans, especially in social media. Yeah. And the way you promote your games, the way you promote the Champions Hockey League and this excellent video which you produced the other week where you welcome uh, Europe to Glasgow. And we, we simply feel a, lots of energy coming from, from British hockey and especially Brayhead and the Glasgow area. So we are, we are very, very excited to have uh, the English League, Sheffield and Brayhead on board uh, for this coming season. Yeah, of course. And I mean, it's an interesting one from our point of view, because obviously our league has a, a team from every part of the United Kingdom. So there's obviously Scottish teams, English teams, a uh, team from Northern Ireland, team from Wales, which is a real rarity uh, in British sport. And the clan fans certainly aren't shy of uh, showing their support on social media. In fact, all the fans of all the elite teams are certainly not shy of showing their, their support. But how do you think these teams can fare in the, the Champions Hockey League? I mean, there's, there's a huge difference in wages and wage scales between these teams. How do you think the, the Brayhead clan can get on in this, this group with uh, Vakwa and Ingolstadt? Uh, after the first year of the Champions Hockey League, we at least know how the Nottingham Panthers performed. Yeah. And although they lost, for example, to Lulio uh, heavily at home, at the end you can say that they performed very well, probably above expectations, yeah. and they really played up to their potential, and that including winning a game against the German League Hamburg, and I'm pretty sure not even the most avid Panthers fans thought that they would be able to beat a strong team from a strong European league. So we think that Brehead is at least of the same caliber as, as Nottingham. So I think that there is a uh, potential for a little upset, especially in one of the two home games. Oh, that's uh, good to had. hear. That's, yeah. very, that's very good to hear. I appreciate that. They landed in a very strong group. Växjö is not only a Swedish team, but they are the reigning Swedish champions. And uh, <clears throat> Ingolstadt, if I remember it correctly, played in the German final. Yeah. So uh, obviously two strong teams, a huge challenge for the clan. And Simon, have you seen any, inter any interesting interaction across Europe then this season? It must have been quite funny to see fans from different countries uh, interacting with each other. Yeah, it's, it's an, a, incredibly entertaining to follow the the threads on, on social media. And by far the best interaction I've seen so far this season was uh, it, it began with a question from a Brad fan addressed to uh, the German Ingolstadt fans. And the question was very simple. Is there beer in Ingolstadt? <laughs> oh, well, you've got to make sure. <laughs> After approximately... 30 seconds, there was an answer from an Ingolstadt fan, and the answer was the German beer purity laws were written in Ingolstadt in 1613. Do you have any more questions? <laughs> he might have been asking it. I don't think he minds about the purity of the beer as long as there's beer. That's all, that's all he was checking for there. So, yeah, so we can rest assured there's plenty of beer in Ingolstadt, is that correct? Yeah, I think that they will, Germans will not make the Scots disappointed when it comes to the amount of beer, no. <laughs> right, okay, we've got no problems there then. Well, thank you very much, Simon. I know you're a busy man, but it sounds like we'll see you in Brayhead. Thank you very much. Right now, Simon did mention, of course, our Champions Hockey League video, which was all aimed at telling the Vicqua and Ingolstadt fans a little bit of something about our club. I think it's probably worth having a look at. Across the landscape of Europe, the city of Glasgow may well be known for its equal measures of nightlife and culture. And while in sporting terms, it may be more commonly associated with the colours green or blue. However, that's beginning to change because Glasgow it's turning purple.
Now, hockey might not be Scotland's most famous export, but that doesn't mean it's all just whiskey, haggis, and films about fighting the English. There's been a proud ice tradition here for a very long time, and the clan are more than eager to share their success story with the rest of Europe. In just five short years of existence, Clan have grown their fan base exponentially, and under the stewardship of head coach Ryan Finity, have gone from new boys to title contenders. Indeed, Clan only missed out on the championship by a single point. We'll see you in the regular season, Sheffield Steelers. Situated just a few minutes from Glasgow Airport, Clan have built a rather unconventional home inside the Into Brayhead Centre. But one person's shopping mall is another's castle clan. I'd now like to take this opportunity to use this rather cheesy link to tell you about some of the more interesting particulars of the Brayhead clan. Centreman Captain Keith seems to be enjoying playing his hockey in the country where his parents were born. The former Chicago Blackhawk will be a familiar face to fans of Ingolstadt as he played for them in 2009. New summer recruit Rick Jackman isn't just a tough and experienced D-man, he also has his name on the Stanley Cup after winning it with the Anaheim Ducks in 2007. Clan are more than aware of the quality they'll face in the Champions Hockey League, but goaltender Chris Holt's 0.92% save average, earned over four seasons in the KHL, will certainly provide a welcome boost. He's not bad on the guitar either. Scottish forward Tristan Harper isn't just talented on the ice, but he's also an emerging male model and was recently featured in Italian Vogue magazine, one for the ladies there. The clan are also immensely proud to have the best mascot in the league, Clangus, as a Highland cow. Yet we even do cows differently in Scotland. And of course, the ever-growing Purple Army, consisting of thousands of men, women and children, forming a family which we hope to expand throughout our Champions Hockey League adventure. So, don't be alarmed if on the streets of your hometown you see fully grown men who aren't wearing trousers. That's just normal where we come from. We'll see you soon. It's windy up here. So, and there you have it, the magic of television, change of jersey, change of kilt, and we're all ready for tonight's game in Vequa at the airport. In fact, here's Captain Keith as well. You, you all ready and excited Good. for the trip? Good, yeah. You got your passport? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so keep a little eye out on the various updates. We'll be having one every day for the next four days. I'm 90% I'm sure they're going to happen. 90% sure. 87% sure they're going to happen. Matt?